G'day. My name's Nathan Linzel, and welcome to episode number six of the fine art of distraction. So, with today's episode, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be using one, two, three canvases. Now, I'm not doing three different paintings. I'm actually doing one painting on three canvases. Now, you must be thinking, oh, he's just going to do one of those triptych paintings where I line up the three canvases next to each other and do a big pour across all three of them. Nope. I'm actually going to be doing a stacked canvas, sort of like a wedding cake. <laughs> now, a few weeks back, I was actually watching my friend Kelly Marshall do this exact same technique on one of her videos. And after watching her video, I was just like, what? I got to try that myself because that was insanely awesome. So the next time I was at Officeworks and I noticed that there was three different sizes of canvases there. I was like, boom, 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 boom. Grabbed them off the shelf, went and paid for them, came back home and then watched Kelly's video again. And then I noticed that I made a bit of a boo-boo. <laughs> Kelly used an 8 inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch shallow canvas. Silly me got an 8 inch, a 12 inch, and a 16 inch deep canvas. <laughs> so I think mine's going to use just a little bit more paint than what Kelly used, but I think it's still going to turn out pretty cool. Now, while I'm talking about Kelly, I really do invite you guys out there to go check out Kelly's page. Kelly's channel is called Kelly Marshall Art, and I will link her channel in the description down below. So I really do invite you to go check out her channel after this video. You won't be disappointed because the first time I actually jumped on Kelly's channel, I literally watched all of her videos back to back. They were all amazing. So you won't be disappointed in what you see. So yes, go check out her channel. Just like what Kelly was doing in, in her stacked canvas, she did the bloom technique. Now I'm also going to do the bloom technique as well. Now there's two ways you can do the bloom technique. You can either blow the cell activator across the top or swipe the cell activator across the top. Now for those that don't know what the cell activator, cell activator is, basically with the bloom technique, there's three different layers to the bloom. There's the pillow paint, there's the paint, and then there's the cell activator. So the, the pillow that everything sits on has to be a little bit thicker because you want that paint to sort of sit on top then that cell activator needs to be thinner than the paint because when you're either blowing the cell activator or swiping the, the cell activator across it, it, it has to be thin enough so that paint that's underneath sort of can sort of fight against it and, and, and pop through. Because like when, you, when you swipe it over, it's, that paint underneath is going, let me out, let me out, boom! And then that's when all those cells and lacing happen. So I will explain a little bit more about the cell activator when I'm actually going through the products. Um, so yeah, you'll learn a little bit more about that. Now, I'm actually doing the swipe technique, as I said. Now with palette knives, so these two here, I got these from, a, from an art shop. Each of these, so this little one was $14.95. This one was $19.95. If you shop around, you can get them really cheap. Now I got these, all of these for $12.95 and these, all three, for $14.95. You don't need to spend big money on palette knives because really all that you need is a nice smooth surface and straight. It needs to be straight. <laughs> but in saying that, you can actually do a swipe technique just with paper. 
So you really, really, really don't need to spend massive amounts of money on expensive pellet knives when you can get three for the price of one if you shop around. So yeah, another little art attack for you. <laughs> but now that I've gone through um, what I'm gonna be doing today, we'll head over to the table and I'll go through all the products that I'll be using and yeah, then we can get started. So thanks again for joining me on, on episode number six and yeah, let's jump over to the table. Thanks guys. Alrighty then. Well, here's all the products and colors that we'll be using today. And as you can see, there's quite a lot here. So I'll break it down a little bit. So the pigments that we'll be using are from Health of Mind Art. And I've got rich gold, bright gold, sunflower yellow, lime green, Bermuda blue, and also pop purple. Now with the pigments, they're actually going to be used on their own and they're actually mixed with the Torben's Easy Coat in the neutral and also the Joe Sonia varnish. Um, now, I'd love to tell you the ratio of what I've used there, but because I got that ratio from the Shelley Art course, um, I, I don't think I'm allowed to actually um, say how much ratio is in each because when you do the um, Shelly Art um, course, that's where you learn her recipe. So I, I don't want to um, get in trouble for letting the cat out of the bag with, with her recipe. So, um, but if you want the recipe for, for, for this, definitely um, jump onto Shelly Art and um, do her course and you'll find out her recipe. The paints that I'll be using today are from El Rado de Palo and also Liquitex Basics. So the El Rado de Palo, I've got Wattle, Green Light, Metallic Waves and Purple. Now I've actually mixed Liquitex into those paints as well. So in the Wattle, I've actually mixed Liquitex Gold. In the green light, I've added in Phalo Green. In the Metallic Waves, I've added in Phalo Blue. And in the Purple, I've added in di Dioxazine Purple. Um, I've only added in like 10, 10 grams of each color into, into also this mix as well. But the ratio with these in the paints is different to the pigments. So unfortunately, I can't tell you what the ratio is, um, but I can just say what is in it and that these are different. <laughs> so I'm really sorry that I can't let that one out of the bag. But again, if you want to know that recipe, um, jump onto the Shelly Art course and you will learn that recipe. The Amsterdam Black that I've just got here, that will be mixed with the Australian Flow Troll. I can tell you what the ratio of that is. So that ratio is actually going to be four to one. Now you, you will remember back um, in the intro when I said that not many people know what cell activator is. Basically, there's only a certain few paints that actually work well as cell activators. So like, for example, the the black from El Rado de Paolo and also the black from like, say, uh, Montmartre and Global, they actually don't work well as cell activators. So you really do need to um, do a little bit of testing to find out which paints work well as cell activators and which ones will work just as, um, like paints to paint with. <laughs> so with this, with the cell activator, it needs to be thin enough. So the paint underneath 
can come through, but not so thin that it actually like cuts through all the way. So like, for example, if like, um, you had a, a, a block of butter, for example, um, and you put like a really hot knife through it, that's just going to go straight through the butter. So that's the same as if you're, if you say, if you mixed, say six to one, your cell activator will be way too thin and it'll just, it'll just sink straight through um, all the paints and you won't get any cells or lacing. So it needs to be that perfect um, ratio uh, for it to actually, one, allow the paint to sort of break through, but two, not thin enough that it actually cuts all the way through to, to the canvas. So um, I hope I explained that um, well enough. Um, if you do have any questions about it, um, hit me up in the comments and I hope I can answer your questions. So, because um, <laughs> the cell activator is a bit of a, um, a tricky one to explain. Um, the base paint that I'm going to be using today is actually um, from British Paints and it's the, um, it's actually black. So, um, it's actually an exterior paint to paint the outside of your house rather than an interior paint. Like say if I was using white, I'd be actually using the interior paint. Sorry. So yeah. Um, you will notice that I've got my airbrush over there. I did say that I'm going to be swiping with, and these are probably, these are the, the two swipe tools that I'll be using today. I do have the airbrush over there just in case I need to fix up some of the, um, the edges or anything like that. Um, I've also got my um, uh, torch here to uh, pop any of the bubbles, but I also will be um, popping the bubbles just with like a, um, a, a skewer because I don't really want to use my torch that much when I'm using the house paint because it'll actually um, go all um, gloopy and glumpy and, and sort of stick together and you don't really want it to stick because this is actually quite sticky. So, um, yeah, I've also got the ruler and a pencil there. Um, I've got that there because when I'm stacking the canvases, I actually want them to be perfectly center. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to draw a very faint cross from from point to point on the canvas on each of them except for the the eight inch one i don't need it on that one but like when you do that cross you can sort of line it up and you should be able to get it perfectly in center i will show you what i'm going to do with that <laughs> um, and then i've also got my hot glue gun just here to actually stick those canvases together so now that i've gone through all the products and what we're using, um, then I'll show you um, how I'm actually going to um, stick the canvases together and then we can get painting. So thanks guys and let's get drawing. <laughs> you. Alrighty then. So as I said before, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a very faint line corner to corner across this canvas and also the 12 inch canvas because by doing this then I can actually line up those crosses and I should be able to get it perfectly center Now I am using, remember I'm using black, um, I'm using black paint for the base, so I want, you won't be able to see this cross underneath it, so yeah, <laughs> so don't, don't get too scared. <laughs> So 
So now, by lining up the corner onto the corner, we should be able to get it perfectly center. So then it should be two inches the whole way around. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there you go, two inches there. Stuff in the way. Two inches there. Two inches there. There we go. And then, obviously, this one will be the same. You just got to make sure all the the corners are on, on the actual line. Like so. And that should be two inches there. Perfect. Oop. There we go. Uh, hang on. Okay. Two inches there. Two inches there, and two inches there. There we go. Now, I just got to, uh, now I just got to glue them. So, because I know that they line up that way, I can pull them apart and get the glue ready. But what I might actually do, just to make life just a little bit easier, just do a little marking again on the corners. Just so, because when I, when I put the glue down, it's gonna, I, I don't wanna have to move it. So, all right, so let me just get the glue and, and we'll get going. Okay, so let's get started now. We're just gonna let it let it dry or let it set I should say <laughs> and then um, and then we can start doing the painting alrighty guys we're almost ready to go so and as you can see I've got my lazy Susan back out you we're going spinning all right all right, and you might also notice that I've separated the colors. So on this side, we've got all the yellows and greens and gold. And on this side, we've got all the purples and blues and also gold. Now, the reason why I've set it out the way I've set it out is because when you're doing a bloom, it's always good to layer your paints and pigments in a particular order. So it's always a good idea to layer a tube paint down first and then sandwich your pigments in between it. Now the reason behind that is in tube paints, like the, the, um, the Alrado de Palo and, and the Liquitex, these two just here, um, the, the binders in them and also the pigments are, are much 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 stronger than what are in the pigments that you buy and you make your own paints from so when you're stretching out the paint 
if the binders sort of break down, you're going to get a lot of flocculation. And basically, if, if you were just to do um, the pigments on their own, you're, you're going to sort of almost see through them too much because the pigments are broken apart because you've broken the binders. So, and that's what, that's sort of what flocculation is, where, where it sort of breaks apart. So, the, the idea behind putting a tube paint down first, it's sort of, it's, it's like a base for your pigments to sit on. So, when your pigments start to break apart, there's a, there's a color underneath it, so um, they don't get lost in the base paint, if that makes any sense. So... So what I'm doing is I'm doing Elrado de Paolo and Liquitex purple down first. Then I've got the three pigments and then the Elrado de Paolo and the Liquitex on top to sort of sandwich it together. And then with these ones, again, I've got the Elrado de Paolo and the Liquitex uh, wattle and gold just there. And then I've got my pigments in the middle. And then the Arado, the Paolo, and the Liquitex. And now this is actually uh, light green, metallic waves, and phalo green to make this color, which I think is a pretty cool color. <laughs> I actually really like that. So, yeah. So I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense with the, the, um, the binders and the flocculation. Um, Again, if you have any questions on that, drop them in the comments um, below and I hope I can answer your questions. Um, now, I'm not a professional or anything like that. This is just stuff that I've learned myself. So, um, and I'm more than happy to sort of um, share what I've, what I've learned myself. Um, all right, so, so now that I've, I've, got, I've shown you the, the, the colors again, um, I'm gonna start laying the um the base paint down and then i'm going to start layering the, the colors on top of it and then i'm going to swipe and then i'm going to spin <laughs> all right so let's get started you
give it a bit of a spin. Let's give it a bit more force. Alright, it's starting to look pretty cool, but what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit more on it. So before we do another bloom, we always got to put a little bit more base paint down, pour a little bit on the center. And so what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing that I want a little bit more of the, um, the purples and, and the blues. So I'm going to do some purple and blue in the middle now. because I'm only going to do like a little swipe in the middle okay so remember tube paint first And the pigments. I'm 
more pigments. A little bit more pigments. How how amazing is that Bermuda blue, by the way? That looks delicious. <laughs> And then finish off with some tube paint. And how good does that combination of the Elrado de Palo and the Liquitex look? It almost looks like Grimace from McDonald's. Mmm, <laughs> McDonald's. And if you do happen to miss a little bit, it's always good to have the small ones there. So then you can sort of do that extra little, tiny little swipe that you missed. Alrighty, now I'll just do. Now remember, because it's got house paint in it, you don't want to torch it heaps. Now I am noticing that there is a big air bubble just there. So I might just go around with the toothpick and pop all those big ones. All right, now I think this is going to be the final, final spin. All right, let's go, guys. overly happy so I'm just gonna do just one swipe without adding anything over the top just just the cell activator and hopefully I don't ruin it <laughs>
All right, guys. Well, <laughs> I'm actually really pretty happy with it. Um, I shouldn't have done that swirly bit up the top, but oh well, not to worry. But overall, <laughs> I really love the effect of like the, the, the paint sort of just running down all, all the canvases. Like it looks so, so, so cool. I'm actually really happy with it, to be honest. Fingers crossed it dries as good as it looks now. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll, I'll bring you down for a close up and yeah, and then there we go. All right, now the beauty about this being on the lazy season, I can just stand here and just spin this around. <laughs> But how awesome is that? Yeah. So, so cool. I'm really, really happy with this, guys. So, so happy. Look at that. I love that blue and the purple in the middle. You. So happy with it, guys. Alrighty guys, well here is the almost dry result. It's still a little bit wet on the top and in, in the corners, on the edges I should say. But I tell you what, I am absolutely loving how this turned out. I probably should have stopped a little bit earlier, like I probably shouldn't have done that final um, bit of gold in there. Um, but... It's a learning curve, I guess. <laughs> and Kelly, if you're watching this, I hope I did your technique justice because I tell you what, I had a lot of fun doing it. And guys and girls, <laughs> if you haven't um, checked out uh, Kelly's channel, please jump onto Kelly Marshall Art and um, yeah, you won't be disappointed in what you see. I love the fact that I'm just spinning this on my lazy Susan because I don't have to walk around it. <laughs> but while I'm talking about my lazy Susan, um, my next episode, being episode number seven, will actually be a full tutorial on how to make the lazy Susan from scratch. So I hope you join me on that one. And also, how to make the silicon mat. Now, as you can see, it's a 90 centimeter Lazy Susan, and I made the silicon mat to fit it perfectly. So, yeah, I hope you join me on that. But while we're still looking at this little gem, we'll just go around one more time. And I'd like to thank you again for joining me on this episode, because this is the fine art of distraction.